Hi, my name is Ryan Kuhlenbeck from Seeking Vehicles, uh, working down here at Sector 111 today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the positive crankcase ventilation system or the PCV system found on your Toyota powered uh, Lotus Elises and Exiges. The PCV system in your car provides two basic functions. The first of the functions is that it circulates air through the crankcase so that moisture doesn't build up. Moisture can uh, deteriorate your engine's oil life as well as in certain conditions um, if it was to freeze, it can cause problems on the pickup side of the oiling system. The second side of the uh, second mechanism the PCV system provides is that it tries to maintain a slightly negative pressure in the crankcase at all times, in all situations. Um, in Europe, they actually have a law that states you have to maintain uh, some form of negative pressure in the crankcase at all times. Uh, this. This is in there for not only emissions side of the house, for hydrocarbon emissions, but also to ensure proper functioning of the piston rings as well as the drain back passages within the block. So the layout of the PCV system in the vehicle is common amongst the various um, model years and boosting devices of the Lotus Elise and Exiges. So here we have Sector 111's mock-up engine where we've got a naturally aspirated setup with the PCV system in place exterior as well as two cam covers that I'll, we'll use to show the insides of the system here in a second. So the basic connection schemes that are present is a before the throttle blade connection and an after the throttle blade connection on the manifold side or manifold assembly here. Um, if it was a supercharger, the supercharger would be back afterwards. So the connection scheme is basically the same. And then on the cam cover, the cam cover is common to all of the different applications on the Lotuses. And you have two ports. I'm going to go ahead and pull these hoses off of here. Uh, you have a, a half inch OD port and then a smaller, and this is actually an orifice and check valve port that are present on the cam cover. So as you can tell, the smaller orifice check valve side of the cam cover is connected to the after throttle blade port on the intake manifold. So this is where vacuum is present when you're driving around normally. Um, when you go to wide open throttle, there's no longer vacuum present here and this check valve actually closes and this system no longer provides any flow path. This side of the house, this port here, is connected back to the pre-throttle body side and it serves two purposes. Um, during low load operation, like when you're normally driving around, it provides a fresh air source for air to enter into the system and we'll kind of explain that in a little bit. And then under a high load situation it provides a vacuum source into the crankcase. And this is caused by you have an air filter over here and all some other things that have restriction in them that leads to what we call a pressure drop. And it creates a little bit of vacuum, not much, just, just right around ambient but slightly vacuum right here in front of the throttle blade and provides a flow path to kind of pull some of those crankcase gases out of the engine. So now we're going to give a brief explanation of how the system actually performs when you're driving down the street. Uh, there's two situations we're going to go through today. One is what we call a low load situation, which is like when you're driving down the highway. And this is where you can rack up a lot of time on an engine uh, cruising from LA to Las Vegas or whatever your favorite uh, drive is. When you're at a part throttle situation like that, what happens is there's vacuum present in the intake manifold because the throttle blade is closed. The system starts here where vacuum is present. It pulls the air through the smaller orifice section here on the cam cover. Um, it's a metered orifice so that it only pulls certain amounts at a time that the engine can handle. And then we go over to the cam cover where this connection here, if you remember, is connected down into this baffled passage right here. The baffling connects the green orifice valve through the small section to its little connection into the crankcase with this little hood here. It goes, it's pulling air from the crankcase itself, which is connected through the other side to this little entrance right here. And what happens is, as you pull a vacuum out of the crankcase, it has to get fresh air from somewhere. And that fresh air comes from the, actual, the other connection on the throttle blade, in front of the throttle blade. So it pulls its air from the little hood right here through all these little passages and then back around through the bigger half inch port found right here which connects to the pre-throttle blade side. So what it's doing is pulling in fresh metered air that was read by the mass airflow sensor. It was filtered so there's no dirt in it from your air filter. Brought that into the crankcase, circulated it with the gases that were present and then came back up through the other side of the block 
and into the other passage in the cam cover and back into the intake manifold where it was then mixed with regular air and fuel and burnt out through the tail, uh, tailpipes in the combustion process. The other situation in which the PCV system functions is the high load situation. Now this is the track type uh, driving where you have a lot of wide open throttle. When you're at wide open throttle what happens is there's no longer vacuum present in the intake manifold because the system's operating at peak load. When that's occurring there's no vacuum here for this whole line to work through and this check valve actually closes to avoid any form of back pressure into the cam cover. The only system that's prevailing at that point is here through the um, through the larger port, which is connected to the throttle body. Again, because you're at high load and you have some restriction in the intake system, there is actually slight vacuum amounts present here in front of the throttle body, and that's what the system's counting on. That vacuum is the only thing that keeps the crankcase under vacuum, the piston rings you know, operating properly, and all the oil drain backs occurring the way they should within the system. So during these conditions, vacuum is present here, and it's pulling air and oil and the crankcase gases out through the cam cover through that half-inch port. And if you remember, the half-inch port, again, it's connected right here on the valve cover, which is under this baffle plate in this passage right here. So the crankcase gases are coming up from the crankcase through this hooded section of the, the baffle right here. So imagine the air is flowing into here. It enters into this passage system and is flowing around through these ridges, around this corner, around the bigger ridge, and then back out of the system. Now the way the system is supposed to function is that as the hot uh, crankcase gases and air and oil mixture enter into this system, they go through a torturous path. So the idea is they come into here, they have to go over these ridges, around this turn, um, over this bigger ridge, and then back out of the system. And when all of this occurs, it's trying to do a few things. By having volume in the system here, the air actually slows down. When it slows down, it gives the chance for the air and the oil to separate and the oil to drop out. The other thing it's doing is providing a lot of surface area for that oil to actually grab onto and, and then, again, drop out of the system. The final thing that it's trying to do is cool it. And once you, you know, the aluminum is cooler than those air oil gases coming out. And it's similar to the condensation effect that you think of it like a cold surface with water forming on it. And again, it, it'll form oil droplets and drop out of suspension in the air and hopefully drain back into the engine. These little dimples right here on the baffle plate, you'll notice there's a small hole in all of them. If you look at where those are located, they're located right around some of these ridges and points and things of that nature where the oil is supposed to collect and then drain back out. And that's the purpose of these, is to allow that oil to come back out of the system. If it did its job right, you get all the oil out of the system by the time it got back over to this port. That port would be connected back to the engine where it would pull that air, the crankcase gases through with minimal air. You get burned in the combustion process and sent back out and everything would be fine. One of the problems that we'll discuss here in a second on the Lotus is that it doesn't do a very good job of that and as you'll, those of you that have been to the track, especially with a supercharged car, will note uh, there's a lot of oil that builds up in the intake track and in the intercoolers of those vehicles.